Hi everybody. I'm off to Memory Corp to spend Christmas with one of my nieces and her family and I thought I'd take something along with me to contribute to the Christmas dinner. So I'm making a French apple tart called Tarte aux Pommes Maypi. Maypi was the Contest de Toulouse-Lautrec, I understand anyway. I've had the same tart several times in different parts of France and uh, found the recipe so many years ago in one of my cookbooks and I've made it quite a bit and it has been uh, enjoyed by a lot of people and a lot of people have got the recipe from me. It's remarkably simple and it makes a very attractive looking dessert and very tasty. I'll give you a little look at what the finished product looks like here and then I'll spend a few minutes producing the apple tart. That's the finished apple tart, taco pom me pee. And now we can take a, a little bit of time here and uh, see exactly how it's made. Well, this is a very easy pie or tart to make, and it always seems to get rave reviews. I know I've given the recipe to several friends who now make it. When, whenever they have something special that they want to present a pie at, I guess. Traditionally, I've made it in this particular tart pan. And a tart pan is a, just a pie pan with a removable bottom so you can get it out and put it on a tray. But there really isn't any reason at all why it couldn't be made as an open face pie in a regular pie pan. So if you don't have a tart pan available, there's no reason at all why you couldn't do that. As you saw, I've used the uh, rectangular one, mainly because it's new. I've never used it before, so I had to see how it works. But it also has a removable bottom, which makes it easy to uh, get the pie out for, for serving. Anyway, the first step in the process is to line the uh, tart pan with pastry. Well, there's the shell lined with the pastry. I'm not taking you through the making of the pastry itself, because I'm sure you can make better pastry than I do. I cheat. Uh, this time I've used, I guess the name has been torn off the top, but it's Dr. Oetker. Uh, packaged pie crust, everything in, in there except you add four tablespoons of cold water. I'm not a very good pastry maker, so I tend to use the packaged ones. My favorite, I think, is, is the Robin Hood, but I haven't been able to find it lately in the stores around here, so I've switched over to Dr. Oatco, which seems to work just fine. Anyway, roll the pastry out so that it's large enough to fit inside the pan. And the cutting off is quite easy with a rolling pin. Remove the excess. And in places like this, you have to shape it up a little more. That can be easily taken care of too, I guess. Now, I lightly prick the bottom of it with a fork. Supposedly that uh, prevents it from bubbling up during the baking process. I don't know if it's actually necessary or not, but it's one of those things they say to do it, so I've always done it. And while I'm uh, making the filling and preparing the apples, this will go in the refrigerator to chill. Pastry always bakes better if it's been chilled before you put it in the oven. As I said, there are very few ingredients involved in this, but I think you'll find that it's a very tasty pie. Uh, to make the uh, batter that goes over the eggs and the shell, you start with a cup and a quarter of white sugar, to which you add a quarter pound or eight tablespoons of melted butter. And not just butter that's been just melted, but it has been browned, if you can see down in there how dark. It has gotten this a fine line between browned and burnt. You have to watch it quite carefully, but most of the flavoring for the tart comes from the caramelized butter. So add the sugar and butter. I 
to this, I add a couple of more flavorings. Uh, the original French recipe that I started with uh, doesn't call for any additional flavorings. I've had this particular tart in France, and I'm convinced that they are using something as a flavoring. I don't know what it is, but I find if you don't put any flavoring in, due to the amount of eggs, it tends to taste, taste like an omelet with apples in it. So my favorite apple pie flavoring is nutmeg. So I add a few grinds of fresh nutmeg. Not very much, just a, a little to give it that nutmeg flavor. And I love vanilla, so I give it a splash of vanilla, probably a little over a teaspoon there, I guess. Mix that in. I should have smell-o-vision, because the vanilla and the nutmeg and the butter smell coming off of this is very nice. Next addition is four whole eggs. I've already I've already taken mine out of the shell. But the fresh eggs they still tend to separate very easily into single eggs when you add them. Beat after each addition to get the eggs thoroughly incorporated. oven beeping. Preheat the oven to 450 degrees. There's the last egg. I've got a feeling that this might make a bit too much batter for the tart pan that I'm using this time. I've never used that particular tart pan before, so I may have some leftover batter. The last addition is just three tablespoons of uh, pastry flour, ordinary all-purpose pastry flour. And you beat that in as well as possible, trying to get rid of any lumps that might be forming. That's all there is to the batter that goes over the eggs. I'll just set that aside and prepare the apples and uh, get them ready to put in the tart. You'll need two or three apples depending on the size. I'm using uh, apples off my own apple tree, a heritage apple tree called Pumpkin Sweet. And this is a chance to show off another one of my gizmos here. I just lost suction. It's not attached to the counter anymore. Oops. Anyway, that has peeled the apple and cored the apple. I take these little pieces off at the end that still have a bit of of peeling on them. Hens get that for a treat along with the peeling and the core. And then if you slice down through that you get nice even uh, slices to put in your tart. And I'll show you how that's done in just a few minutes here. Well, I think I ended up using about two and a half apples for what you see there. Give the batter one more good stirring and pour it in.
isn't too much batter, but I don't think it is. It settles in. There are voids down in there that it will settle in and fill, and it does puff up a bit when it, as it bakes. But I don't think I mentioned that uh, a good substitute for the apple that I'm using is the Granny Smith apple. You want a rather crisp apple for this, a softer apple would probably turn to, to mush, and you want the apple to have some texture when it's finished. I will place this on a uh, foil-covered cookie sheet, just in case something does boil over in the oven. And it goes into 450 degree oven for 8 minutes, and then you reduce the heat to 350 degrees and continue to bake for another 45 to 55 minutes just checking in the last 10 minutes or so there to see if the uh, filling has set basically you don't want it to be too runny when you when you cut it later on so you can generally tell just by jiggling it whether or not it uh, has set enough well that's it just out of the oven and I baked mine on the 350 degree setting for exactly 45 minutes. I think this uh, tart pan is shallower than what I'm used to. The other tart pans would have taken the 55 minutes to an hour, but it appears to be done. Now I have to wait for it to completely cool to see if it will come out of the tart pan. Well, I must say I like the new mold, the new uh, tart pan. It came out very easily and it slid off the base very easily. So. Basically, that's the tart ready to travel to Memram Cook. Now, the serving suggestions are you can serve it just as it is or dusted with icing sugar. I tend to serve it just as it is. I think kind of gilding the lily. It's already sweet enough. doesn't really need any icing sugar added. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and hope you give it a try. It's really quite easy to make and uh, I think delicious.